Here we're going to go over hip anatomy. Here we're looking at the anterior abdominal wall as well as the anterior thigh. We can appreciate the tensor fasciolatum muscle feeding into the iliotibular band as well as the gluteus maximus muscle that feeds into the iliotibular band. Here you can appreciate some of the abdominal musculature including the external and internal oblique musculature. You can appreciate the intricate network of vertebral bodies and the lumbar and thoracic spine feeding into the ribs. And now we're kind of doing a bottom-up view looking at the pelvic floor and making the ilium and ischium translucent. And now we're rotating we can appreciate the lateral hip again. And now we're removing the external oblique muscle, and you can just see the internal oblique muscle underneath that. And again, you can see the tensor fasciolata and the gluteus maximus muscle feeding into the iliotibial band. And now we're going to remove the internal oblique muscle, and now we can see the transversus abdominis muscle. You can also appreciate the inguinal ligament. You can appreciate the complexity of the neurovascular structures within the groin. Also, you can appreciate the psoas minor and major muscles here, as well as the iliacus muscle. And now we're rotating towards the lateral hip. We just removed the gluteus maximus muscle. Now you appreciate the gluteus medius and minimus muscles attaching onto the lateral and anterior facets of the greater trochanter. And now we can appreciate the iliofemoral ligament over the anterior hip, as well as the ascending branch of the lateral femoral circumflex artery. And now we're moving gluteus medius muscle. And you can appreciate the gluteus minimus muscle underneath that. Here you can appreciate the gluteus minimus muscle, which we just removed. The ilium is now translucent. You can see the underbelly of the iliacus muscle. You can see the pelvic floor musculature as well, as well as the extensive neurovascular structures. Here you can see both the ascending and transverse branches of the lateral femoral circumflex artery. You can appreciate the direct and indirect head of rectus femoris, which we just removed. Here you can see the pubofemoral ligament overlying the hip capsule. Also, you can appreciate the femoral artery, nerve, and veins, and how the femoral artery branches out into the deep femoral artery, which then gives rise to both the medial and lateral femoral circumflex arteries. Here we just removed the pubofemoral ligament, and now we're making the capsule translucent, but you can appreciate the reflected portion of the capsule over the femoral neck. Now we're rotating posteriorly. You can appreciate the greater trochanteric bursa, also the sciatic nerve, the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, as well as the inferior gluteal nerve and vasculature. Now we're removing the neurovascular structures. You can appreciate the external rotators of the hip, as well as some of the pelvic floor musculature. Here we're looking at the hip with the external rotators removed. The capsule is translucent, but you can get a good view of the reflected part of the capsule of the hip joint. And now we're removing the femur. You can appreciate the deep cavity, the acetabulum, as well as the ligament of teres and the fat pad within the hip joint. And here's with the cartilage of the acetabulum. And here we're just looking at the femoral head itself with the ligament of teres attached to the fovea of the femoral head. You can appreciate the labrum around the head of the femur as well. And here is the hip joint itself.